ready to go? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so today we're going to be talking with you about um, the leadership aspect of uh, the Pitta Cup for Beta Theta Pi. Um, and the level that we are striving for is uh, excellence. So um, right here is just a list of like a lot of our current practices, like what we do in our chapter. Um, first, we're going to define um, what leadership means uh, to Bay Theta Pi, our chapter culture, um, talk about our Ayavugan ceremonies, um, how we do transitions, and the leader uh, leadership conferences that we have. So what does leadership mean in Beta? So, in Beta Theta Pi, we have many leaders across campus and both in our fraternity. Um, the leaders in our fraternity gain ex excellent leadership experience through the management of our fraternity. And in addition to that, we feel that we prepare our leaders for great roles across campus, whether that be in executive boards and presidents of sports clubs, in undergraduate student government, or class officers or collective. We have many members across campus involved in many leadership activities. In addition to these formal leadership, uh, opportunities and positions, every beta also strives for leadership and in everyday life. A quick example of this was at the leadership conference which I just attended at Keystone, um, there's an opportunity where uh, uh, um, a beta at another chapter was making uh, remarks that we found were sexist, so I, uh, one of our Keystone members, James Guerin, immediately approached him and said this is unacceptable and we feel that this would be a better way to uh, phrase these comments and show his leadership in his everyday life. That's a quick example of what leadership means to a beta. All right, to speak a little bit more about the uh, leadership of uh, the, our chapter culture around leadership, similar to, lead to what Lucas was saying um, about uh, how we define leadership, but not only do we have a lot of internal opportunities for leadership, but we also push for external ones. So obviously we have a lot of both elected positions and um, and committees that people can serve on as members of the chapter, the executive committee, the cabinet committee, uh, the CHI committee, which is our brotherhood committee, as well as our judicial body, um, and some other subcommittees for things like recruitment, social, things like that. Um, but we, what we also like to do is push our members to get involved outside of our fraternity um, and be involved with things like uh, undergraduate student government, USG, um, the academic integrity board, orientation leaders, uh, Relay for Life, things like that. Um, something that we do during chapter is outside officer reports, and what that is is a chance for anyone who's an, out, uh, an officer in an organization outside of, the, um, outside of the chapter. They can speak about what they've been doing, um, like for example, two of our brothers, Larry and John, um, are involved in Academic Integrity Board, and they've been letting people know, hey, um, applications are open for that, and uh, you know, we'd like to see people apply, things like that. Um, and we also encourage uh, younger members in our chapter to take on leadership roles. Like we, um, I believe every year um, that we've had a new uh, executive committee elected, we've uh, always had at least one uh, new member um, on the committee, so. So now I'm going to talk about the Ive Uglin ceremonies. So um, what this is, is it's a chance um, for brothers in order to talk uh, to each individual brother about um, how they feel like they've been doing for the semester and some areas where they can improve and what they've been doing well. So we have um, two of these ceremonies um, every year, so like once per semester, sort of in the middle of the semester, so you can um, <clears throat> have a lot of things to like think about before going to the ceremony, but you still have time to consider uh, the feedback that you've received. Um, but a lot of um, the comments made are very helpful to um, just as sort of a check from people that like we know like really well um, to see like where um, they where we might be struggling and where like some of our brothers have sort of noticed it when we haven't um, and where we can sort of improve ourselves. Um, this becomes like especially applicable with like leadership positions, especially within the chapter because. Um, especially next semester when our uh, main elections are coming up, a lot of people will bring up like, hey, like, have you thought about this position, you know, or like, I think you'd be really good um, for like running for president or like whatever else. So it's just a way of sort of um, giving feedback to our brothers. Um, we also have um, committee specific Ivalgon ceremonies. Um, normally these are once per year, once per semester as well. 
So the whole exec board would just do uh, an I will like um, in themselves. Um, same with cabinet and also the pledge class as well before they um, do one like with the entire chapter. So another thing that we do to promote leadership within our chapter is leadership transitions. So at the end of every semester for semesterly positions and the end of the term for year-long positions, we have uh, a transition meeting with the two execs and discuss individually with, any, with each officer um, what the main uh, aspects of the position are, what we'd like to improve with the position, how you can go about that, in addition to a lengthy um, report, especially for the president, describing exactly what um, the president needs to do, what these resources would do, and we have years of these transition documents which allow each president to have uh, a wide perspective of uh, ways to tackle issues from multiple years. So. All right. Um, another thing that we do in our chapter to uh, foster leadership is send uh, various members to lots of different leadership conferences. So the first one listed is Keystone, which actually just took place this past weekend. Um, and is a, lead, a regional leadership conference for the executive committee. And what they do there is they, they bond as a committee, talk about their goals um, for the upcoming year and how they can all work together to accomplish these goals with the chapter. Um, they also have specific breakout sessions for their individual positions to learn a little more in depth about how to, uh, how to run their individual positions. Um, next is the John and Nellie Wooden Institute for Men of Principle. So that is a... Um, an institute that they hold every summer, and now there's also winter sessions for any uh, any brother in the chapter to go to, and it's really a chance to examine sort of your personal place in Beta Theta Pi, and learn more about the chapter's history and lore, and just kind of strengthen your Beta connection, and then talk in groups about you know problems you may have in your chapter, and come up with ways to go back to your chapter and take what you've learned and try to improve it. Um, next up is the Undergraduate Interfraternity Institute, um, and that is a institute that is held across both fraternities and sororities, um, which is a chance to learn about, again, just kind of leadership through uh, in Greek life. And this past year, we, uh, we sent one brother to that and uh, a brother the year before that. Um, and that's just a great opportunity to, to foster leadership skills. Um, next is uh, CPLA, which is the Chapter President's Leadership Academy. So every time a new president is elected, they will go to CPLA um, within a couple weeks after being elected and just have a much more in-depth um, uh, leadership seminar on how to be a president, how to run the chapter, um, things like that. And then uh, finally, every summer there is the, uh, the National Convention, which is a gathering to celebrate the anniversary of Beta's founding. Um, and at that, we have a, a leadership college, which every undergraduate who attends that will go through leadership college, which is kind of more about um, your own personal leadership style and learning about things like that. So um, I know uh, a couple of us attended that this past summer at the 175th convention. So uh, yeah, a lot of different leadership conference opportunities. Then over the past year, we've also made numerous changes um, that affect like our leadership style. Um, the first is some bylaw changes. Um, next is we um, sort of um, there are some changes within our Kai committee or like the Brotherhood committee. Um, <clears throat> we also incorporated uh, the ritual chairman onto exec. Um, we are trying to utilize like technology better. Um, there was like a shift in our recruitment period and um, utilizing strengths quest. So for some bylaw changes, um, one main change that we made is we have a formal appeals process now um, for our bylaws. Um, previously, we like have our bylaws, but then um, <clears throat> exec like there's always been some cases where someone like comes up to exec and is like, hey, like I feel like I should get an exception for whatever reason, and then it was sort of like exec or exec's uh, position to say yes or no. Um, which like sort of defeats the purpose of like having the bylaws in place. Um, so <clears throat> we constructed a formal appeals process uh, in order for like if a brother feels like they were in a certain circumstance where like an exception should be made, um, they can approach the chapter and then there's a chapter vote. And um, I think you need two thirds um, majority in order to pass that through. So um, we feel that this is like keeping our brothers more accountable because even though we have an appeals process, 
um, it's not just going like through exec and um, the members are more accountable that way because it is like harder to get an appeal now. Um, a second change that we made is um, we um, sort of condensed our chapter standards. Um, before we like had a bunch of different standards, but they weren't all unified in one place. Um, and we created um, a sy uh, point system in order to compare sort of like the different aspects of what it means to be like a good beta. So we have um, a scholarship section um, and then attendance, uh, service hours, um, outside involvement, um, and one through the CHI committee and also a financial one. Um, just so it looks at what we consider um, being um, in good standing um, and made it more um, like concrete in the expectations that we have for our members. So this is just another way that we are trying to increase the accountability of our chapter um, and also a better way to track our members um, either through um, like if they're having difficulties trying to address the issue earlier rather than later to make sure that um, they can grow like through that process. All right. We also uh, recently made some changes to our Brotherhood Committee, which, like I said before, acts as both the judicial body as well as a uh, kind of a Brotherhood Fostering Relationships Committee. Um, so the Brotherhood Committee is chaired by the Vice President, and I, uh, I just finished my term as Vice President. And the way that the operations manual worked for how the committee is supposed to be run wasn't kind of structured super well. Um, and any time that changes were made to it, just the vice president would like make a change and it would be passed down to the next vice president and there wasn't really a lot of consistency. So what we did was we went through and went through the operations manual and updated it so that it was entirely accurate with our current practices. Um, and we also made it so that every time it gets updated, it has to be approved by exec um, to add greater accountability and more transparency to what's going on with that committee. Um, in addition, uh, our bylaws also stated that the members of the committee were supposed to be elected, but just that wasn't a practice that had been done in the chapter for years and years. So we decided to go back and examine that and see what would be the best practice for how our chapter works. Um, so we ended up going with sort of a hybrid system where the members who want to be on the committee submit a letter of intent and then the executive committee uh, appoints a brotherhood committee and then it has to be approved by the chapter, so kind of slated in um, and approved by the chapter. Um, and finally, we uh, increased the way that we uh, kind of dole out funding. Um, so in the way it's, it, was current, it was previously practiced was that the brotherhood committee was supposed to put on a certain number of events um, for brothers to go to and have fun and bond and things like that. However, they, we recently set aside a certain amount of the money for brothers to come and say, hey, I want to host my own event. Um, you know, I'd like to take personal charge of this and um, you know, do something fun with brothers and I need a little funding for it. So now we have a way for brothers to be able to do that. Um, so sort of increase the, uh, the individual um, action of uh, individual brothers who want to hold events. The next change we had was the adding of the ritual chairman to our executive committee. And this is a, a relatively large change as it adds one other member to the executive committee, allowing more individuals to have a greater say in chapter governance. And another valuable aspect of adding the ritual uh, chair to the executive committee is it allows um, a per an individual in chapter whose main focus is in ritual and living out chapter ritual to have a say in the exec and, and really implement that. and allow executive a greater focus on our ritual. And so that's something we value really highly and that we're currently evaluating if it's the correct choice, but I think that's a very a very positive uh, step in having greater leadership in our chapter. So um, we have also been using uh, more um, technological services in order to like, help our chapter. Um, the first is that we um, set up a Google um, or a chapter of Google Doc um, or Drive, and um, there a lot of our uh, core documents are in there. Um, so I think the um, our bylaws were just added um, previously. Like someone like normally the president like had the bylaws and they weren't like widely distributed. Um, so now it's just increasing transparency. People know exactly what's going on, um, and they're just 
right, like the law of documents, because before um, I was like a previous scholarship chair and I had um, the like scholarship plan, but like it still wasn't really widely known throughout the chapter until like someone did make grades or you know, whatever else. So um, yeah, so that's like just important. Um, we also have chapter spot. So uh, we use chapter spot for our recruitment. Um, and it is just a way to see like all of our potential new members um, being able to have like a list of everyone um, who's come out to events and organize them and it just has made the process a lot easier and more effective. Um, there's also Pursuit. Um, so Pursuit is a, um, an online program uh, from our, um, uh, our headquarters um, and there are just a lot of online seminars and classes a big one that I remember was like how to increase our chapter buy-in. They also have um, what like a good scholarship chair um, does and they have uh, sort of different modules for each position in the chapter. Um, we, last year we won the Wisconsin <coughs> Pursuit um, Implementation Award um, at convention so that was very exciting. Um, and then lastly we have a Google Calendar just so it's um, more efficient just so everybody knows um, what events are going on and when, because um, like it's so easy just to like, sync it up <coughs> at all times. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Um, another uh, recent change that we made, which we feel has been a, a great success so far, is how we handle the <laughs> recruitment period. So basically, the recruitment chairman was is normally elected in the spring and then we'll immediately take charge of the recruitment that, that semester, so they would handle the spring and then the fall semester. However, what we're doing is now shifting it so that the previous recruitment chair handles um, that spring and then the new one will handle the fall and then the next spring. So instead of being thrown into the position and having like a couple of weeks to prepare for recruitment, what they now do is they are placed on the recruitment committee and get mentored by the previous recruitment chair um, so they can kind of see the how the process works um, and better uh, better use the experience in the next semesters. Um, and so far, we've seen in within one uh, one usage of this, it's been a great success. And uh, the the new recruitment chair has got a lot of great mentoring under the previous one. And it's uh, um, yeah. So one thing that we've been implementing within our chapter is greater usage of strength quests. So as you may know, the university has been uh, strongly pushing strength quests as a way to evaluate leaders and learn what type of leadership style you have and what would work best for you. So one um, aspect of that is every uh, pledge uh, of our chapter is required to take a strength quest, take a strength quest quiz, and learn about their leadership style through that. And in addition to that, the majority of our chapter has, um, has t have taken the strength quest uh, and have used that to greater assess their own leadership 